Hi, my name is Rich Boren and I'm the owner of Cruz RO Water and Technotics. And today I wanted to talk a little about RO membranes that are used in marine water makers. Talk a little bit about the different sizes, the different types that are out there. Dispel a few myths that kind of float around about uh, water maker membranes. Give you a basic idea of, of what are their operational parameters. The, the more you know about the RO membranes, the more the black magic can be taken away from them. And you can uh, understand how they're working, which gives you a better idea of how to take care of them. And you'll just be a better user of your overall water maker. So first, there's three things that control the production rate of an RO membrane. Well, there's three that you can control, and there's two that you really don't have any control over. The two that you don't have any control over are salinity, the salt concentration of your water, and the temperature. The things you can control and are designed into the system is the membrane surface area, the flow rate of the seawater flowing through the membrane, and the pressure in the system. Those three things, flow rate, surface area, and pressure, those are the operational parameters that we design the water maker around and select the membrane pumps and everything to try to optimize that. So let's first talk about the different sizes of membranes. There's 40 inches long by two and a half inch diameter. Those are what we use as a standard membrane. There's 4 inch in diameter, both 40 inch and 21 inch long. There's 2.5 inch in diameter, but 21 inches long. Some water maker companies have a specific membrane size designed for their water maker. So instead of using a standard 21 inch or 40 inch membrane, they've either contracted with Dow or another manufacturer to basically produce a membrane specifically for their water maker and I don't like those and I don't mind saying I don't like those and I know that may upset a few people that may sell water makers with specific size membranes that only they can get but here's the problem with that if you're doing a 38 inch or some 3 inch diameter or making a unit a membrane that only fits in your water maker instead of $187 for an off-the-shelf membrane, your membrane's now three, four, five, seven hundred dollars $700. Okay, if the membrane is a lot better than an off-the-shelf unit, I can see the justification for that. But the reality is most of these special membranes, they're using the same Dow Chemical Film Tech film or something very similar to that, and they're just having them made to fit their unit it's not really special in terms of being better I think it's special in terms of costing more and you know having a higher profit margin because they're the only ones you can buy it from so when we set out to design a water maker one of our first criteria was we're gonna stick with non proprietary parts as a cruiser myself I know the disaster if I can only get something from one company so we looked around and we said what's the best RO water membrane on the market Hands down, the gold standard is the Dow Film Tech membrane. There isn't a membrane on the market that I'm aware of that has a higher salt rejection, higher freshwater production per surface area and pressure than the Dow membrane. So we looked at that and said, wait a second, why don't we use this membrane? It's $187. It's available around the world from hundreds of vendors online. The part number we're using is an SW30-2540. You enter that part number into Google, literally hundreds of different suppliers for that membrane pop up online. So you know what that means. It means the price is going to stay down. So we use the 40-inch membrane as a standard for our water makers. And I get a lot of questions. Hey, Rich, I've seen water makers that use 21-inch membranes. Why don't you use a 21-inch membrane? because I can fit a 21 inch membrane on my boat in my mounting location but one of your 40 inch membranes is going to be harder to fit in so the reasoning for that is simply cost and efficiency so let's kind of look at the numbers of course if you don't have space and you have to have a 21 inch membrane well you have to have it that's just the way life goes on a boat but 
140 inch RO membrane, two and a half inch in diameter, with a 1.6 gallon per minute pump at 800 PSI, 68 degree water temperature, and, and, and normal seawater salinity, that's going to produce 21 gallons per hour of fresh water production. If you now take two 21 inch membranes, which has close to the same surface area, put those in series, you're now only going to produce 17 gallons per hour. So you can see right off the bat, two 21 inch membranes from the same pump and motor, everything else the same, you're going to make three gallons per hour less. And you're thinking, okay, Rich, I can live with three gallons per hour less because I want to fit it in this certain locker. Here's the catch. A 40 inch membrane and a 21 inch membrane and a 40 inch pressure vessel and 21 inch cost me the same. There isn't the price difference. So you can now see that one 40 inch pressure vessel and membrane is, is going to be a lot less expensive than two. So not only do you make less fresh water, you're also going to be paying more for that. Now we, we do make those. We can produce those for folks. It's just a matter of, from an efficiency standpoint, you really can't beat a 40-inch a RO membrane two and a half inches in diameter. It's, you know, there's been lots of folks trying to find some better mousetrap, but right now what's out there, that's the most efficient, cost-effective way to have a membrane on your RO unit. So I mentioned that we put those 21-inch membranes in series. So the question always becomes, hey, Rich, why are you, like on your 30 gallon per hour unit, the two 21 inch units, those membranes are plumbed in series. Why aren't you putting them in parallel? Because realizing if you put them in series, membrane two is going to see less seawater because some of it was removed in membrane one as fresh water, and that's going to be saltier water. So membrane two, why don't you split the flow evenly? And here's the reason. One of the things you like, to, or design criteria you shoot for in an RO membrane for membrane health is known as the scourging effect or the brine water. You need to maintain a minimum flow rate through an RO membrane for the membrane to be healthy. If not, the amount of seawater you're taking out will change this pH and concentration just enough to allow more calcium deposits. So you, you want to keep the flow rate through the membrane as high as possible. Because for example, our 20 and 30 gallon per hour units, the only difference is one or two membranes, 40 inch membranes. So every time we get, every once in a while we get calls, hey Rich, can I buy your 30 gallon per hour unit, but I want to buy a third membrane and put one more in series. The problem is that third membrane won't have enough flow. So you can't just keep stacking up RO membranes because you're going to run into a flow problem on the progressive membrane. So there is some design that goes into that. You just don't want to throw another RO pressure vessel on if your high pressure pump can't support that increased flow rate. Because remember, flow rate, surface area, and pressure. Those are the three things you can control in designing a water maker. Temperature and salinity just kind of is what it is. So in looking at the different size of membranes, there's also a four inch membrane that's on the market. Four inch in diameter. They make them in both the 40 inch and the, in the 21 inch. So that gives you more surface area, but the problem with those four inch membranes and why most water maker companies don't use those, including us, is that the flow rate through those membranes needs to be higher. And a higher flow rate, what does that mean? Well, just get a higher uh, seawater pump. All right, well, a higher seawater pump needs more horsepower, bigger motor, harder to, harder to drive. So there's a balance between how much flow rate you can reasonably put through a membrane while trying to remain efficient with your AC pump or your engine driven pump or your 12 volt pump for that matter. So it's a balancing act. So without a doubt the 40 inch membrane works the best and kind of meets all the different criteria in, in terms of longevity and cost. Now 
some other some other aspects about the membrane film is there's that and, and by the way there's a couple of videos on our website one of them produced by Dow Chemical that actually shows how the membranes are made another one is a computer animation video which kind of shows the membrane taken apart shows graphically on the computer animation how the seawater flows through the membrane how the membrane film I would recommend checking out those videos I think it gives you a good feel for how the membranes are working. But one of the important things about the membrane health is flow rate, and it also is important to keep particulates out of a membrane or they will clog it up. What, the one thing that will completely destroy and damage your RO membrane is chlorine or oxidants. You never want to use an oxidant or chlorine to run into your unit. That's why on our systems, you have an activated carbon filter so that when you're doing the fresh water flush from your tank, if any water taken on at the dock has any residual chlorine in it, it will be removed by the activated carbon filter. Because the part of the RO membrane that actually does the RO, the reverse osmosis, and lets the water molecules pass through but rejects the sodium and uh, chloride ions, is a molecular layer organic film. So that film is very sensitive to pressure fluctuations, which is one reason you, you want to slowly increase and decrease the pressure of your water maker. And it's very susceptible to chlorine. So you have to be very careful with the fresh water flushes. So I think one of the other things about membranes that people kind of need to be uh, aware of and it's kind of, they have a bad reputation in terms of, oh, you know, membranes are very sensitive, they require lots of maintenance. Well, they do require some maintenance, but what is that maintenance? How hard really is it? I don't think it's that difficult, but here's what's going on. The membrane can sit in seawater indefinitely. That doesn't hurt anything. What fouls a membrane is the organic animals, the plankton, the algae that live in the system. What will happen is those animals, when a unit sits unused, will grow, use all the oxygen, die, and then start rotting. And then the anaerobic bacteria present <coughs> excuse me, will start producing hydrogen sulfide gas, which is that H2S smell. And that can actually damage the membrane. So our own membranes and water makers in particular, they need to be ran every five to seven days. Something needs to happen. Either a fresh water flush, which is just replacing the volume of water, or simply run your water maker to keep the bacteria from taking over and damaging the membrane. So I hope you learned a little bit about our own membranes, why we're using the unit we're using. If you have any questions, I'm always available by email at rich at cruiserowater.com. You can also check out our website at cruiserowater.com. If you have any topics on watermakers you'd like to see me discuss and make a video about, I'd be happy to do so. Have a great day and thanks for watching.